hunting from a new POV. Jason Doyle is after his first CWD with Paul Chinese Childerly. Kai balls it up. He is producing game fast food, rabbit, pork and mozzarella meatballs. Then he's off filming Seeker Hines in wild wet Ireland with our Norwegian friend Johan Trigger Solheim. Plus there's a chance to win some Shooter King kit. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Jason, there's a couple of trophies from the last couple of days we've taken. Here you've got the massive, massive gold medal. He's a bonzer. Um, and then we've got a young buck. And then yesterday we actually shot a pair. We shot this one and this one, um, and it's actually a doe. I knew it was a doe, but she's up to us as well, um, which is quite, quite unusual on them. We shoot probably two a year, and we actually have shot one in the past, a silver medal. Really? Yeah, so it, it's right round here, but very thick. Um, as you can see, the buck here, <coughs> the tusks are, you know, quite straight as they're coming out as younger, and then they curve back as they're getting older. Um, the does look more like a, like a, like a canine, like a dog tusk mm -hmm. or dog tooth, and they actually don't get much longer. They actually get fatter. They get very, very fat. That's a young buck. I think we're going to have a look at him. I don't know, but I think the two on the right are shooters. One on the left, definitely an old doe. I'll leave her. So we'll go up there and have a little look. Okay. Nine times out of ten, you can always tell these older does just because they've got a long, narrow head. Yeah. Um, same as your, yeah, same as your, all, all the deer. The young buck's got a triangle head, and the, and the doe's got a long, long, narrow head. Ah, we're in the middle of a field, so we're just going to have to basically walk out to the tram line, get up on the sticks, okay, and whichever of the two gives you a shot, take it, okay, whichever you think, okay. What age would this book be compared to this book? This book is under a year old, so he was born last end of May, June, and we're in end of, end of March now, so he's, he's not even a year old, and he's showing, showing tusk. And a mature book like him, if in a fight he breaks a tusk <coughs> or two, is that him finished? He, he's lost his... He's done. Yeah. He's, he's gone down to okay. the cold, cold list. And yeah. he, he won't be able to hold those anymore then? Well, actually, it's quite funny. When, when they actually break a tusk, they, for some reason, they become more aggressive. So okay. th Because, obviously, they haven't got the weapons, they're actually, they have to, have to use their brute force, and yeah. you'll see them barging it's into more... A bit of a complex. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> and also, they're a nightmare to have on you, because they, they, they end up breaking more bucks' tusks because they're fighting with them all the time. Yeah. And you see them, when they're coming in, when they're in the rut, they're coming in and they do this, um, like, head dancing movement, and you see the ones who got broken tusks, they won't do the dancing movement, they just charge straight in. Okay. And of course that's when you get the, you know, the smashed tusk. If you get a choice, take the one on the right, okay? Okay, there you go.
okay? <laughs> Good one, boy. Well done. <laughs> Having to be quick. <laughs> Is that your first one, Jason? First one ever, yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, I saw them here when I was with Paul in, in the summer, but they were out of season. And I actually stopped a couple just to have a look. It kind of been playing on my mind that I wanted to do it, and there was only one guy really to shoot water there with. So um, it was to come and stalk with Paul and get a bit of a hunt out of it and learn more about the species and to get my first one. So, yeah, nice little stalk in and um, as with all hunts, the, as the stalk progresses and you get nearer to a shooting position, that's when the excitement builds and they'd seen us for a little while when we were glassing them, so it's always that, are they going to stay or not? And just as we got into position here, they stood up and the adrenaline just went, yeah, yeah. Just went through the roof, but I enjoy the buzz still, which is, which yes, is good. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Initially, though, the, the, the centre one was going to be your animal, yeah? Yeah, basically there was, there's an old doe on, on the left and um, the centre one was a young doe, I could definitely see that. And I see on the one on the right was a, I wasn't sure if it was a bigger buck or a, a younger buck. But actually, I'd, it'd be interesting to see because obviously a little bit further away. It looks like it's got something on its eye, maybe, maybe some runny eye or damaged eye on the face here. So it might be nothing, it might be just some mud, but it'd be interesting to see in a minute what the problem is. So Yeah, I was right. Mucky eye. Yeah. Obviously you got a... Not life threatening, but a good one to take out. Good shot, quartering shot. Thank you very much. Well done, mate. Great shot. With these guys, there's not much on the front end. We tend to use the haunches, the saddle, um, and we do a long saddle. So we've got a saddle right up to here. Um, so the front end, there's minimal meat on, to be fair. So we tend to say to, to clients and ourselves, you know, hit them good in the front. You know, you've got the animal down, and, and it saves saves the saddle and, and messing up anything back there. This is cracking eating. Young buck, coming up to a year old. Well done chaps, and some interesting deer facts there. Now you may have spotted that Paul was wearing a Shooter King Digitex jacket worth, as the discerning amongst you will know, £185. Well, you can win one on the Shooter King Facebook page. And to speed your passage there, go to bit.ly slash win a jacket. Pop the words Shooter King Digitex into the comments below and we will draw a winner in a couple of weeks time. Now from when it takes it all to, well, Dancing Queen. And he's Abba's biggest fan. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Poland looks set to be the first EU country to ban most hunting. Showing how easy it is for governments to introduce bans on hunting, the Polish Senate has crumbled under pressure from the animal rights activists and has voted for a raft of new laws, including no under 18s to go hunting or join hunting trips, dog work and falconry training to be banned, no fines for animal rights thugs sabotaging hunting and hunting clubs, managers and members to be liable for wildlife damage in their areas. Two protests in front of the Parliament building in Warsaw have not moved the Polish government. The last chance is President Andrzej Duda rejecting the bill on the 23rd of March, but he made it part of his presidential election campaign to criticise former President of Poland Bronislaw Komorowski for going hunting. Three members of a British hunt were wrongly convicted of going fox hunting. The CPS dropped its opposition to an appeal against conviction halfway through the case at Nottingham Crown Court. The conviction hinged on photographs taken by anti-hunters. Now Paul Larby, Peter White and Jane Wright of the Grove and Rufford Hunt want to know why 50 other photographs proving their innocence were not handed over to the lawyers. Meanwhile in Dorset, magistrates threw out a case against the master of the Portman Hunt. There have only been a handful of convictions of people from registered hunts since Tony Blair's ban on hunting with hounds in England and Wales came into force. And they've usually been where organisations such as the RSPCA have assembled six-figure legal war chests, making the cases too expensive to fight. Now the anti-hunting organisations want to change their own law.
District Judge Stephen Nichols said the court was not satisfied. This video evidence provided by Antti showed Evo Shirley was hunting. The British Royal Society for the Protection of Birds has come out in favour of some bird shooting. The RSPB's Conservation Director Martin Harper says some shoots provide beneficial habitat management for wildlife and often increase numbers of some birds. It's lukewarm, but it shows that some RSPB staff occasionally visit the countryside. Meanwhile, four weeks into the job and the new Chief Executive of the British Association of Shooting and Conservation says he will continue to make lobbying Parliament over shooting sports a priority. I think we're absolutely keen to be reflected uh, in a way that helps support shooting and in order for us to get a balanced and clear message about shooting in a way that protects our interests, our way of life and our future. And that's what we point our members towards, giving them clear information to make balanced decisions themselves. I mean, let's face it, you know, our members, the people who watch this, they, they know and they can make up their own minds once we've given them the right information, which is you know, part of what you do and part of what we do. Really important. Duck shooters in Australia have been banned from the wetlands they saved. Nine areas in the state of Victoria are off limits to duck hunters this season in order, says the local game management authority, to save ducks. But the Sporting Shooters Association of Australia points out that there would be no wetlands, that there would be no wetlands if it were not for the lobbying by duck hunting interests. Now, anti-hunters have kidnapped the wetlands. Along with Field and Game Australia, SSAA will lobby for the sites to be reopened before the end of the season on the 11th of June, 2018. Are you in the Ipswich area on the 3rd of May? Suffolk Air Rifles is holding an open evening. Three air rifle ranges will be on the go, airsoft, air rifle and pistol. There will be a Jack Pike giveaway with clothing worth more than £400 and Charlie will be there. Entrance is £1, sounds about right. For the event page on Facebook, go to bit.ly forward slash Suffolk Evening. There's lots about vermin going on on Facebook. Viewer Will Hunter gets in touch about his group the Ratting Crew, which aims to get like-minded people together to form rat packs if they're not already in one. And 17-year-old gamekeeper student Connor Baker has put up a page that features plenty on rats and rabbits. Links are in this film's description. Also, the UK government is currently consulting about trapping, especially stoat traps, and you'll find the link to take part in that too. And finally, Robo Wolf has howled its last howl. Japanese farmers reckoned they'd solved the problem of wild boar rampaging through their crops. The 3,000-pound super monster wolf moved its head, howled faintly, and its eyes flashed red. But they flashed their last, for the manufacturer is no longer offering the product. You are an up-to-date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now we have a new occasional series on our Facebook page. Simply pop over to Facebook and search Field Sports Channel. It's called Tip Tuesday and it's where we ask the viewers a question and they, you, answer it. This week we want a scope for under £800 with a 30mm tube IR and a 50-56mm objective lens. Thanks to Damien Brook for answering the Delta Titanium 2.5-15x56 SFHD with 4A illuminated reticle at £699.99. And thanks to Lee Unsworth for suggesting the Athlon Optics Helos BTR 8-34x56 first focal plane illuminated at £579.95. No prizes, but everlasting gratitude from the sporting community. Now, we think 2018 is the year to give game meat a shove in the right direction. So here is Kai with the first in a new series of fast food.
thank you Kai and that item came about thanks to a vote from our shareholders so thanks to you lot too now meatballs is after the fact here's before not rabbits but Kai is after seeker in Ireland <laughs> Are you a fair weather hunter? If so, look away. This is likely to make you uncomfortable. It's a little bit windy up here, isn't it? It is a little bit windy, yes, as you can probably hear and see. That's an understatement. <laughs> Earlier in the year, Kai Atbrin and his crazy Norwegian red deer expert friend Johan Trigger Solheim were invited to Ireland for fun and games with glacial valley hunting. So we gave them a camera and told them to get on with it. Uh, we're now in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Somewhere, I don't know where. But <laughs> anyway, we're going out stalking Sika. With this, with this nice chap. <laughs> and his dog. And his dog. So I'm here in West Wicklow with my good friend Alan, who's invited me and Trigger, who's behind the camera. Wave, Trigger. There he is. Um, to come Sika stalking here. It's hybrids. It's going to be hybrids, hinds. hinds and calves this time of year. Yeah. Uh, the stags aren't in season, but gotcha. we've, uh, we've seen some on the way up anyway. Yeah. So pretty we'll excited. Hopefully, get you back here for the rush yeah. in October. Fantastic. And we'll get you hybrid <laughs> seeker. We've, we haven't got long. We've yep. got less well about an hour and a half now. So let's go and, uh, go and head up, bit. head up and see what we can do. For Trigger, it was his first time to see and shoot the Seeker hybrids. But it has not started well. A cancelled flight means a late start. Right, so we're done for today now. Um, unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't get anything today. We bumped quite a few groups. It's nice to see there's a lot of beasts in this area. Just uh, wasn't our day today. And it's not only that, time was running short. We didn't have long due to the uh, late flight. So we're going to go back, Trigger and me, and we're going to rest up, have some food good sleep and then tomorrow we're both on the guns and I think tomorrow's gonna be a really good day by the sounds of it so let's see what tomorrow brings. Day two has potential, potential to deliver some horrible Irish weather. Right we're gonna keep going we're gonna get over the fence here in front of us yes and just we're gonna to get to the skyline which will give us an advantage looking down into the wind for animals yes. hopefully underneath hopefully. us. Um, the animals will hopefully be grazing up in the pea hags because they have their natural wind protection, wind barriers up there because this is brutally open here. Oh, it's very open. Um, and then when we get to there, see how we're getting on, okay. make a plan. If we see animals there somewhere else, then make a new plan, get in on them. Just hopefully. keep making a plan. Yeah. Let's go see what we can get. Yeah, yeah, sounds like a good plan. Oh. So we're traveling across the peat hags. It's quite, it's quite a challenge, it's quite difficult. As you can see, the wind is blowing us backwards. Uh, Trigger and George up there with the two dogs, persevering through. So we're gonna just keep going and hopefully get to the other side. But the mist is coming, we've got that high, the mist is coming in again. So visibility is, is down to a minimum. So hopefully over the next, next bit, we might be able to see some, so. The hills offer no cover, but the one benefit of the rising and falling fog is the natural invisibility cloak. We just got to the side of this mountain, it's just taking shelter and uh, the mist has come in. And then right in it... front of us, sir. Right in front of us, another one walking out. Uh, we've, got some deer in front. we've got some deer in front of us now. We're going to wait for the mist to come back down so we can get closer to them because we're in open ground. We'll try and film it, but we can't guarantee they'll be able to see the deer because of the, of the mist. But we have got some beasts out here now. So we're going to wait for that to come down, and that's the plan, isn't it? So we can just get undercover yeah. and get as close as we can. Use the natural cloud covers because this is all we have. We've There's no nothing. cover now at all yeah. to try and get down. Yeah. So just wait, wait. And everyone stay in single file, all yes. behind each other. We should be okay. Kai finally has the chance of a shot. it's steadier than the camera and the hind is down. On the lower slopes Trigger also has a beast. It runs a few yards into cover and the Bavarian mountain hound has an easy but useful track. Ah, 
good dog. Good. George checks and cleans the hind. Trigger has turned this part of the hunting process into an art form and is always keen to see others perform the gralloc. Normally, if possible, you would hang it up in a tree or...? Yes, um, if you had a mature tree, hang it up in any of the trees, but just where we are here with the natural lay of the bank, everything would fall out. That should be okay for us. And what I do is, I always like to leave the kidneys against the fillets with a bit of fat. It's just when, when you go back to the Jeep and the bit of protection it allows on the fillets when the blood goes up on it, by removing these it takes away a lot of the blood off the fillets, just keeps them somewhat cleaner. Grolix yeah. itself. Seek a calf like this, three days you can hang it for, you can hang it for two weeks if you like, ten days. Usually I leave it eight to ten days, varying on when I get time to go and butcher the deer. Um, but it's it's whenever time allows. With the deer sorted, George is mindful of keeping this meat product off the ground and packed away so as not to horrify local ramblers. By putting it in our bag, we keep as much, if it takes the rain, we keep as much rain off the animal. If we fall in the muck, keeps the animal as clean as possible. And also, if we do come across hill walkers, some people are still warming to the fact of shooting. So it just, they're unaware of what is on our backs. Now, like so. Kai and Alan are a little more open about taking their hinds off the hill. In all, the guys account for three hinds and a video camera. I don't know, rain, electronics, it was never a good idea. Thanks to Kai and Trigger for self-filming that in horrendous conditions. And thanks to Glacial Valley Hunting, more from them at glacialvalleyhunting.com. Now from Ireland to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. It's autumn in the Southern Hemisphere and hunting videos from there are really getting going. Rivers to Rangers Kawika Seeker Hunt by Backridge Butcher sees him joined by Hayden and Jem following the Wins the Rivers to Rangers competition at the Taupo Seeker Show. In Australia, South Australia Duck Hunt 2018 by Gretchy shows exactly that, despite what's going on with duck hunting in Victoria QVR news item. And this one is in the UK but recommended to me by Australian viewer Paul Brown. Outstanding falconry and dog work in an old film by Stephen Lee called Once Upon a Time on the Moor. To Africa, where Serval Channel is after Oryx, Wildebeest and other game in Namibia. Lots of dramatic slow-mo and a film designed to show off Hornady ammunition. Keith Warren is also after Wildebeest, the blue gnu in South Africa, plus an animal that has long been on his bucket list, a roan antelope. From France, Alexis Rousseau of Chasse HD sends me Batou de Sanglier en gros mal et de compagnie, which has had more than 50,000 views in just a few weeks. Wild Boar remains a YouTube favourite even, no, especially in French. In the USA, they are snow goose shooting. Here is a 62 bird day from freelance duck hunting. And finally, a lot this week, especially in the USA, about YouTube banning guns. YouTube has brought out new rules on guns in films. Now, we think this is about backyard bomb makers, but lots of gun channels are worried. Here's the verdict from the VSA channel, which is one of them. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show, which is at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And you can go to our shares page, fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares, and you can invest in us too. As I say, we'll be back next week. So it only remains to say, good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.